Doris here, president of the American Foundation for Maternal and Child Health. You're about to see a film, or actually a tape, that was produced by Gene Carper for Cable News Network entitled Fetal Effects of Ultrasound. It's a particularly important tape because it documents the growing concern regarding the safety of ultrasound when used in obstetric care. These findings uh, have a relationship to the use of, of ultrasound when it is used in the form of adoptone uh, for a sonogram and for electronic fetal monitoring. Neither the National Institutes of Health, the World Health Organization, or the International Federation of Obstetricians and Gynecologists has recommended that ultrasound be used routinely in obstetric care. While many physicians contend that the fact that ultrasound has been used over a 20-year period would justify its use as a safe modality, the fact is that there is not a single control study today that is looking into the long-term effects of ultrasound on human development. I introduce the fetal effects of ultrasound. Do you pregnant women think twice today about getting an ultrasound scan? Even Lady Diana had one and found she's going to have a boy. It's an instant moving picture of the fetus made by high frequency sound waves. You can see the baby's heartbeat, spinal column, skull, even the tiny valves of the heart. Doctors call ultrasound a new medical wonder a way to spot birth defects, improper growth, and problems that may interfere with birth. Ultrasound is a type of radiation, but unlike x-rays, ultrasound is called non-ionizing. That's what makes doctors almost universally believe it's absolutely safe. That unlike x-rays, it causes no damage to the fetus. I do not tell my patients that there's a potential harm because I do not feel there is evidence that there is a potential harm. But a CNN investigation reveals growing evidence that ultrasound is not entirely harmless. Some scientists and government officials are concerned that it may be dangerous over the long term. They fear ultrasound is grossly overused on pregnant women, may harm the fetus, and should be limited until they find out whether their suspicions are true. Here's what they say may be the problem. Genetic damage to the fetus that could persist for generations, possibly cancer, and subtle birth defects that might not show up for years. But potentially it can produce damage to the genetic material, and some of these early studies are suggesting that there is in fact damage induced by diagnostic levels of ultrasound in human and uh, little rodent cells. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So our concern is growing. Dr. Arthur Bloom is a renowned geneticist at Columbia University and an expert on radiation. If it becomes established that ultrasound is in fact a mutagen, it would also, and most importantly perhaps, or at least equally as important, raise the question as to whether or not it is a cancer-causing agent because a very high percentage of agents that are mutagenic are also carcinogenic. I'm not suggesting on the basis of the evidence that there is a major effect of ultrasound in terms of doubling the rate of birth defects or anything of the sort. We're simply saying that there may be a low-level effect there that's increasing the rate of congenital malformations uh, that we may never be able to detect on clinical grounds. Dr. Bloom and other experts stress that so far they have no evidence ultrasound radiation causes harm in human fetuses but they say we should avoid routine ultrasound examination because we're beginning to see signs of danger, warning signs that in the past predicted medical disaster. One early warning sign is genetic damage to cells and test tubes. We're now seeing this for the first time from low levels of ultrasound. Next, harm to laboratory animals. This too is showing up. Another clue is evidence in humans that something may be wrong. Now, a new government study, not yet released, does indicate that the unborn exposed to ultrasound weigh less at birth. That's a significant signal, experts say, that ultrasound may interfere with normal development. The one thing scientists do not suggest they're finding is blatant deformities of the type caused by potent drugs like thalidomide. We do not detect any congenital malformations after ultrasound, so whatever we're doing, we're doing something extremely subtle, if anything at all. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is that you detect no overt right. kinds of malformations the way we think of them 
as deformed limbs or a missing foot or uh, missing organs. The main researcher who has triggered new concern about ultrasound is Dr. Doreen Liebeskind, a radiologist at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. She exposes animal and human cells to ultrasound waves. She finds abnormal changes in the way the cells look and behave. She won't say the cells are genetically damaged, but she does say the changes look the same as damage caused to cells by 29 rads of ionizing radiation or x-rays. That's the equivalent of about 250 chest x-rays. Here's how normal cells look without ultrasound, growing apart from each other in neat rows. Here's how they look after ultrasound, a tangled mass growing wildly all over each other. Here are other normal cells in motion, with smooth edges moving in a clear direction. After ultrasound, 100% of them become phonetic and distorted. Things are happening. They're happening to the DNA of these cells. They're happening to the behavior. They're beginning to grow in a funny way. They're beginning to behave in, a, in an aberrant fashion. Uh, and in some cases, they're becoming tumor cells. There are some long-lived effects on the DNA of the cells, on the behavior of the cells, and on the cell growth that persists for many, many generations after a single exposure. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, as I recall, in uh, your papers, you were showing that you had effects after 10 generations. Yes, and even longer than that. Dr. Bloom says it looks as if ultrasound causes genetic mutations. If a chemical were doing that, we would call that a mutagen. Government officials are well aware of and also concerned about Dr. Liebeskin's findings. Food and Drug Administration officials candidly admit they cannot say diagnostic ultrasound during pregnancy is safe. No, I don't think FDA can say. I don't think anybody can say that ultrasound is absolutely safe. In fact, the FDA for several years has been worried about the effects of ultrasound and done much research on it. In these tanks, they expose pregnant mice to low levels of ultrasound. They find that the offspring of mice who get ultrasound weigh less when born. More important, CNN has learned the FDA has just finished a new study on pregnant women monitored by ultrasound. We've been looking at a population of <clears throat> children, about 2,000 children, who have been irradiated, about half of whom have been irradiated in the Denver, Colorado area. And the uh, indication there is that those children that have been irradiated have a reduced birth weight. Low birth weight may not sound very serious, but in some cases it's another word for premature. And premature babies more commonly suffer brain damage and mental retardation and are much less likely to survive. Dr. Bloom says confirmed evidence that ultrasound produces low weight babies would be serious cause for alarm. Could represent the effect of ultrasound slowing down the rate of cellular growth and maturation. And if that's the case, clearly that's a very undesirable effect. If that were proven to be the case in humans, I think it would really put the brakes right on the use of this, of this procedure for routine monitoring purposes. You do. Yes, I do. Definitely. I definitely do. Dr. Harold Fox, an obstetrician, also at Columbia University, says there's no need for restrictions on ultrasound. He believes warnings about the technique would scare the public unnecessarily. All right, the public often becomes very scared, worried, anxious, petrified in one sense or another. And I think it's absolutely inappropriate to apply that kind of a warning technique to diagnostic ultrasound. None of the experts we talked with wanted to abolish ultrasound for pregnant women but they believe it's overused, often frivolously. For example, just to see the baby. Our general feeling is that the use of ultrasound to monitor pregnancies that have a clear risk of some kind of birth defect or some kind of pregnancy problem, that that sort of use is appropriate. In other words, where the pregnancy is a so-called high-risk pregnancy. The danger that I see is that ultrasound is now being used for the routine monitoring of many pregnancies that have no particular risks and no particular problems. Dr. Bloom says only 20% of the pregnant women are high risk and need ultrasound, yet more than 50% now get it. That's quite a dramatic overuse. Yes, yes I think it is. I think it is. We would have um, certainly um, more than a million women getting it who right. probably don't need it That's correct. right now. That's correct. What scientists and officials are saying is that they really don't know whether ultrasound is dangerous to human fetuses.
but they have new clues that suggest we should go easy on its use until we know more, because overuse today is not worth the risk of long-term terrible genetic effects in the future. When a female fetus is born, all her ova, in other words, all the eggs for the next generation are present at the time of birth. And therefore, when you subject a female fetus to ultrasound near term, you have not only subjected her cells to ultrasound, but also all her eggs for the next generation. Gene Carper, CNN, Atlanta. The ultrasound radiation described in this report is widely used in American obstetrics today. Ultrasound is used in three types of devices. The first is the ultrasound scan. The second, the ultrasound stethoscope, or doptone, often used in place of a real stethoscope at prenatal visits and in labor. The third device is the external electronic fetal monitor, often used for many hours in late pregnancy or in labor. You can identify an ultrasound device by the necessity to use a gel to conduct the radiation from the device to your skin. Regular stethoscopes do not use a conductive gel. For more information, see the Journal of Nurse Midwifery, July-August 1984 issue.